Without catalytic converters, we would blast even more dirt into our surroundings. They help us to keep the air clean. Without catalysts, this would be just a whole lot of grapes. But catalysts make them into something quite delicious. Without catalysts, there would be no digestion and no metabolism, and we humans would not exist. Professor Ferdi Schut from the Max Planck Institute for Kohlenforschung, meaning coal research in Mülheim, investigates not only how to make catalysts work efficiently, he also wants to develop completely new catalysts which will permit new chemical reactions. He is, so to speak, a catalyst designer. Today, almost all modern large-scale technical processes in the chemical industry make use of catalysts. To some extent, we can structure these in a targeted way right down to the level of atoms. And with designer materials like these, we can tackle problems which only recently seemed insoluble. It seems very appropriate that in Chinese the word catalyst is used for a matchmaker, since it brings partners in a reaction together and also for a divorce lawyer because it can split them up again. Ferdi Schutz's team of researchers in Mülheim develops catalysts for numerous applications. Now they are tackling a very special challenge. They want to make fuel from leftover plant matter. By using the right catalysts, they could make an important contribution to the trend towards renewable energy. If they can succeed in producing bioethanol from wood chips which were previously useless. Bioethanol is still made using rape, sugar beet or soybeans, but they can also be used as food for animal feed. So until now it was a question of into the petrol tank or onto the plate. So the aim is to produce green fuel without losing valuable food in the process. Fuel made from agricultural and forestry waste products. By using suitable catalysts, one day it may be possible to produce petrol without using fossil fuels. The Max Planck team from Mülheim has set itself this ambitious task. But first they need to design the right catalysts and processes. The reconstruction of our energy system and the transformation of the chemicals industry represent some of the biggest challenges we shall need to overcome in the next decades. This is one of the greatest tasks facing our society. But to this day, thousands of tons of wood remain unused every year. The reason for this lies in the special structure of the cell walls of the plant. They consist of cellulose and pectin. Cellulose is a macromolecule with a linear chain made up of hundreds or even up to 10,000 separate glucose molecules that are linked together. Because the bonds are so dense, these glucose polymer chains are very difficult to split up. It is almost impossible to get at their chemically reactive groups, so they are virtually insoluble. And then there is lignin, a macromolecule which holds everything together like a sticky net and further adds to the stability of the plant tissue. All this makes wood into a chemical problem case. Wood is a natural material with a complex structure that makes it a nightmare for chemists. It's very difficult to break it down into its constituent parts and its valuable substances are almost impossible to isolate. For us, the most interesting molecule in wood is the cellulose, a polymer made up of a long chain of separate glucose units. In order to get at this glucose, we need to develop catalysts that enable us to break up the links in the chain molecule so that we can isolate the glucose. It sounds easy, but for over 100 years, chemists and process technicians have been struggling with the problem because so far it has only been possible to get at the tough glucose polymer chains with the help of exotic solutions, some containing heavy metals or with highly toxic acids. The result was a rubbery, glue-like sludge which clogged the pipes in the industrial plants. So that cannot be the solution for the biofuel production of the future. So the Max Planck scientists are now adopting a new approach to the problem, mechanocatalysis. That means using mechanical force or action as well as a catalyst. In this case, the researchers first treat the wood chips with an acid, for example with HCl, hydrochloric acid. Here it is present as a gas, but then they combine the effect of the catalyst with mechanical force. So mechanocatalysis could turn out to be the method for breaking down the cellulose. Despite wood and its constituent parts are virtually indissoluble in all common solvents. The first catalyst starts to work. 
when the solid wood comes into contact with the gaseous hydrochloric acid, the HCl molecules latch on like tiny wedges, all the way along the large, tightly packed glucose polymers. Until now, we used to shred the biomass mechanically and then boil it with large amounts of concentrated acid. This led to enormous corrosion problems in the chemical plants, and it also resulted in numerous byproducts which make the preparation and isolation of the glucose, which is what we are really interested in, extremely difficult. It can't really be used as the basis for chemical production. But now comes the trick which one day will permit biofuel to be produced in an environmentally friendly manner, inexpensively and without toxic heavy metals. The scientists use a ball mill to grind solid wood and gaseous HCl together. So the cellulose is still being treated with an acid. But this acid catalyst now helps to break down the bonds between the glucose molecules in a purely mechanical way, thereby combining two tried and tested processes. Now the balls break up the long glucose chains of the cellulose into much smaller sections, exactly where the HCl catalysts are sitting. The catalyst itself remains unchanged. During this mechanocatalysis, the huge molecule of about 10,000 glucose polymers is turned into oligomers that are five to six glucose units long and hence much shorter, a partial victory. But the lignin must also be separated from the cellulose. To do this, the chemists add water to the finely ground wood particles so that they can then apply heat. The aim is to separate the lignin out of the wood, resulting in water-soluble wood. If they can break the cellulose down into glucose or alcohol, which can then be used, the process could become economically viable. When the mixture is heated, the lignin is separated out as a solid, and we are left with short glucose chains in a clear solution. This can be used to make ethanol, and the lignin becomes a valuable basic substance for the chemical industry. Then the scientists make use of heterogeneous catalysis. That means here one of the reaction partners is liquid, that is, the liquid wood mixed with water and hydrochloric acid. And the other partner is solid, that is, the catalyst. The catalyst consists of carbon particles with elements of ruthenium, a hard and brittle metal from the platinum group. Because this reaction only takes place under high pressure, the next stage must be carried out in an explosion-safe room, so we need to move next door. Here, the Max Planck scientists use a series of pressure chambers because sometimes in chemistry you get quite a big bang. The so-called nanocatalyst is highly reactive. Under the influence of the acid, the short glucose chains, the oligosaccharides, are broken up into individual glucose molecules. The ruthenium carbon catalyst has a very large surface area. This means that many reactions can take place on it. Very fast indeed. The catalyst now permits the glucose molecule to react with hydrogen which has been added. The product is the sugar alcohol we have been looking for. With this process, the researchers have opened many doors to a green future. Biomass which was previously discarded can be made into biofuel, meaning that the chemists are turning straw into gold. For a scientist like me, to be involved in a discovery like this represents something like a dream coming true. With our process, we shall be able in future to make much more use of biomass, and hence to follow new ways of producing biofuel or chemicals. By transferring to a renewable raw material, we shall be taking a further step in the direction of sustainable development. So the research in Mulheim's answer to the question of petrol tank or plate, which is crucial for us all, is into the petrol tank and onto the plate. If you combine mechanical force with catalysts correctly, you can save energy and generate less waste. The catalysis experts at the Max Planck Institute for Coal and Forschung are contributing to environmentally friendly green chemistry. Thank you.